All right, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering a couple of things using Vision Basic 1.1. In my previous video, I did cover some of the basic things you can do, and one of those things was passing variables. In Vision Basic 1.1, you can now pass three variables down to a procedure and then have those values be returned back, and there's some nice little functionality that's been added. But I was kind of playing around. I wanted a way of passing four variables down to a procedure and having those values returned back to the main basic program. So we're gonna look at that. We're also going to look at how to call procedures and how the banks work in Vision Basic 1.0. And then finally, we're going to put it all together with a quick program to pull the user port with my four player interface. I've covered this piece of hardware in the past, but I thought it'd be fun to try to see if we can get the four player interface to work using Vision Basic. Let's dive right in. So the first thing I wanted to show is if we start writing a program, we're gonna do a, clear, a CLR to clear all our variables. And then we're gonna create four variables. Decimal, let's call it P1, P2, P3, P4. And then we're going to tag those variables, four bytes into each one. So we're gonna create a tag. X1 is equal to P1 plus four. And so what that does is it's, you're setting basically a pointer into the fourth byte of decimal P1, and that's, that tag is what we'll use to call a procedure with to return our value back to the main program. And so we'll, we'll, do the we'll do the same with the rest of the tags here. X2 is equal to P2 plus 4, comma, X3 is equal to P3 plus 4, comma, x4 is equal to p4 plus 4. And then we're going to, let's say on line 40, let's print out what p1, p2, p3, and p4 are. And let's just run that and see. We should get four zeros if this works properly. And we do. And so then what I thought I would do is at line 1000, let's call a subroutine. Let's create a procedure, and all you have to do is declare it this way, proc, and let's call it test. And then we'll do an assembly language, a quick little assembly language. We're gonna, we're gonna change those tags, x1, x2, x3, and x4. So let's load a one and store it in x3. Load a two, store it in x4 and so on. Let's just, just for the interest of keeping it neat here, we'll uh, go on the next line. Load a three and store it in, what am I doing here? Let's go a load a one, let's go to X1, X2, X3, and a, th a four and X4. Yeah, that makes it simple. And then we'll return back. So we'll load a one, store it in X1, a two, an X2, X2, a three, an X3, and et cetera, et cetera. And then a line 50, we'll call the test. Line 60, we'll print out the variables again. And then let's just say line 100, we'll end the program. So we're gonna print them out. When it first runs, it should be all zeros. You run your test. So it should set each variable to one, two, three, four and then you print them out again. Let's run that, see if it works. And so that's quite simply, that's the first part. That's, so all we're doing is, we're not passing the variables down to the procedure. All we're doing is referencing them like a pointer. And so we're changing them in the procedure. That way, when we return back to basic part of it, we could still use those variables. All right, so let's clear the screen. And the next thing I wanted to demonstrate is what we can do is create banks in Vision Basic. And so let's look at the file command real quick. In here, there's a banks tab. So if you use your left cursor arrow and right, you can kind of arrow between these. And right now I have banks zero and one on, and you can use the space bar. The plus sign signifies, so it says on plus, which bank is the current bank that Vision Basic is working out of. And you can hit the space bar to turn on additional banks. I've emailed Dennis and he recommends turning on all the banks if you're gonna play with the banks. And so we can do that. 
but uh, I I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I, I don't like having all the banks on. But what you can do is hit shift space to turn off the banks you don't want to use. And I just want to demonstrate that. And in here, you can also give these a name, like this is bank zero, bank one. You could give it your program name and et cetera. Over on the details tab, you can put the the overall details for the entire program here like this we could call this a, a demo or whatever if we wanted to and then in the settings tab we can change some of the colors and stuff like that now if you hit the top left on the keyboard the little arrow left arrow that brings you out of it and that and vision basic still remembers this but you will need to save your program at some point so you don't lose program code that you've been working on if you type the command bank by itself and hit enter, it shows you the current bank that you're assigned to or that Vision Basic is looking at. And it gives you a little bit of information. You can also say bank zero through nine and it'll show all of the banks. It just kind of lists all of them. You can say bank one or zero through nine comma one to turn on all banks. And you can see now all banks are shown as on. You could also turn off the say banks one through nine. We can go bank one through nine comma zero. And now you'll see that those banks have been toggled off. But let's turn bank one and leave that one on. One of the things I learned is you can use the new command and you can zero out the banks. You can say new zero through nine and that blanks them out. You can switch banks by, so if we have a program, if we're in bank zero, let me clear the screen. If we're in bank zero and we have a program and then we switch to bank one and do a new program, if you run this, Vision Basic combines those two programs into one. And so that's kind of neat, right? So I, I just wanted to show that even though like we're in bank one now and it shows just the one program. So switch to bank zero and it'll show the hello part. So we're going to use that to really quickly do a, a demo on the four player interface. Now I believe I purchased my four player interface from Protovision and on their website, it has some assembly language code, which I had a while ago copied over and was using on one of my little programs, uh, Amazing Race, which it was just for a quick demo and quick 4K program. But I thought it'd be interesting if we used that code and somehow made it work in Vision Basic. So let's see what that looks like. Now, when you do go to loading a program, I have a program saved. Say we're in bank one. If I was to load a program in right now, Vision Basic would try to load the program off of the disk into this current bank, bank one. But what I want it to do is I want to switch to bank zero and then load my program. And I think my program is called bank one. So let's take a look at it. Oh, and notice if you have a program, it will ask you, do you want to replace, merge, or skip? I'm going to do replace and replace. So assuming again, we're in bank zero. That's the main program. Let's look at bank one. And that is the code that's on the Protovision website that's basically converted into Vision Basic. And what I did here in the main program You'll see I have those tags. I have the X1, X2, X3, X4. And so this is very similar to what I just demonstrated, the quick demo that I did a few minutes ago, except I do call the scan init. The four player interface requires an initialization. So I call this scan init. And I declare the decimals P1, 2, 3, and 4. And I have the tags X1, X2, X3, X4. I scan the joystick port, calling that in bank one, and then I'm printing out what the variables are, P1, P2, P3, P4, and then I have a go-to, it's just looping. 
And so if I run that, like right now I do have a joystick plugged into port four. So let's run it. And you'll see the value is 31, but if I hit up arrow, see how it switches to 30. And if I hit left arrow, and if I push the fire button, down, right. So you'll see that that works. Now if I unplug that joystick and plug it over to port three, and you'll see it works there as well. And you can repeat that through ports one and two as well. And so using this, you could develop a four player game fairly easily within Vision Basic. And I do like how you can separate out the program banks zero and one. So anyway, that is pretty much my video. I wanna keep it short and sweet and to the point. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll place the source code on GitHub so you can download it there for your convenience. Thank you for watching.